start off by removing these two trim pieces in the back. We've got a 10 millimeter socket and there is a total of six. You only need to turn them about 90 degrees counterclockwise and they should pop right out. Okay, next we've got these two covers here. You're going to want a pick tool and just slide underneath them and pop them out. Careful, because I definitely have sent them flying and I lost one of them. Okay, so we've got two E18 external uh, star bolts here. I've already loosened them. Just want to take those out and then that's a good idea. If you've got one of these, just to pop that on there. And the other one's on this side. Back behind this. And then after that, we've got a 16, two 16 millimeters. Okay, next we're gonna make sure to take this cable out of here before you pull this out. And then you should be able to remove this trim. Just like that. And since this bracket is loose, we can pull this out now as well. And then we're gonna remove all of these bolts back here. Okay, next we're gonna remove this plastic piece back here, and it's got seven. Uh, it's uneven. There's three on this side and four on this side. One of them's kind of hidden, uh, and it's a 10 millimeter. I've already loosened them. Now we can remove this piece, and actually we're just going to need to set it to the side because it's riveted in right there with a plastic rivet. So since we're going to be working on, we're not going to be working on the intake side, we can just set it over right here carefully, and then you can remove this sound guard. And this is also where your fuel pump is. Okay, so we're going to disconnect this clip here. In order to do that, I find it easiest to use a pick tool, pop under there, and just push up. And now, what you want to do is squeeze it together as you pull it out. Like that. And then here, we're going to take a... Uh, external Torx star socket. It's a E8 and we're just going to loosen this and then remember that this bolt doesn't actually come all the way out. It is part of a, a part of the assembly and that's what it looks like when it's all the way out.
Okay, so we're going to release this nut here, and if it's pressurized, fuel will come out. This is the fuel pump. This is a 17 millimeter wrench. So we're going to go slow. Oh, Ooh. there goes fuel. I wonder if we caught that on camera. Yeah. <laughs> go slow, and it just pops right off. I went kind of fast, but it, it was really quick. Okay, so we just removed this nut here, and now we are going to be removing this nut and this nut over here as well. And since we already depressurized the system, we don't have to worry about it spraying us again. We got some fuel. Okay, so we've got both of these ground straps that we're going to remove. It's an 8 millimeter. And make sure that doesn't fall into that socket. That hole. Grab that with a pick tool in a second. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, so we've got this piece, this plastic piece we can remove now. There's still two connectors that are connected, but we're going to lift this up and set it aside so that we can pop these connectors out. There's one right up here, and then there's another one right back here. You can't really see it very well. And there's these two hooks here. And we're just going to have to be gentle. Okay. Oh, there is six connectors. <laughs> Probably one for each of the fuel injectors. Okay, so just like with the other clips, we're going to take a pick tool and get under here to pop them up. And then we're going to squeeze to pull them out. Okay, so I'm stopping the video here, and that's basically because these connectors were a huge pain to deal with. Uh, I think I probably spent 20 to 30 minutes on them and if it hadn't been for my buddy who actually was able to get them out, uh, I probably would have spent a lot more time on them. So if you look at this next picture here, I'm just showing you the connector again. You are going to use a pick tool to pop that out the way that I did, but there's an outer ring and an inner ring. If you look at the area behind the blue clip where the cable's coming out, you can see the cables are going into two holes which are part of the inner ring and then surrounding that inner ring is this outer ring. Uh, what we noticed is that the outer ring will pop up first and then you can squeeze the tab in to pull out the inner ring. Uh, what I'm going to recommend is that you just be patient with it, don't break anything, uh, and I don't know if it was just because it was really cold, but it did really hurt my fingers after a while of trying, and I just, I think I only got one of the six out myself. So definitely take a step back when you get to this point, and try to be patient. Maybe I record you do it, because <laughs> I can't, I can't get this thing out. What the fuck, dude? It seriously won't come out. 
Okay, so this was a really big pain to get out. The connectors really didn't want to come out. But you're going to also want to remove this front connector here. And then all of these six you're going to remove and then you can set this aside. Undo this clip back here using a pick tool. And once that's set aside we can work on the fuel rail. Okay, so we're zoomed in on the front fuel rail right now. We're going to be removing these six, so two, four, six, they're external torques E6, and you cannot reuse these. Uh, you're going to want to buy a new set. They're what's called torque to yield bolts, which means that they should not be reused. Now we're going to remove the next set of six, so one, two, uh, oh, the next set of four, sorry, one, two, and three, four. And this is a external Torx size eight. We've got lots of fuel coming out. Okay, this is the specialty tool that's used to pull the injectors. You're going to unthread all of this and take these inserts out. All of these threads are uh, backwards, so you're going to want to turn it clockwise to remove them. And if you want to take the thread, uh, if you want to take the insert out, you just press this piece in, pull it out. Okay, so next we're going to take this special tool attachment, and I don't know if you can see this, but it has a specific geometry. We want this pin facing inward. We're going to do that for all three of these. And then we're going to rotate them counterclockwise 90 degrees, and the pin will drop. Okay, so next we're going to take these supplied bolts with the kit. We're going to slide those through these holes and then slide this piece here. It's magnetic so it'll hold itself together. We're going to repeat that for each of the holes. Okay, so look at this image to see how to line up your plate um, with the bolts that are in the plate and uh, these threaded holes next to the injectors. Pay attention to this next part of the video if you have any questions on how to get it in there uh, because the plate is not uh, symmetrical which would basically mean that there's only one way to put it on correctly. Now my plate did come with an extra hole that I did not need to use 
And then also make sure you've got those magnetic spacers on the end of each of these. Uh, those spacers ensure that you're going to only be able to thread in this plate a certain depth and it's going to set everything at the correct height to pull the injectors out. Okay, now we're going to take this bolt here, and remember it's counterclockwise to tighten, and we're going to tighten them all the way down. I'm going to do that for all three here. Just hand tight. Okay, so these need to be tightened to 5 newton meters. I don't have the correct socket for it, so I'm just gonna... Uh, I'm not gonna go overly tight, I'm just gonna be reasonably tight on these. See, I'm just giving them a little wiggle, and that's definitely 5 newton meters. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna take these inserts and slide them into each of these and those will thread onto the caps that we put onto each of the injectors which is what actually pulls the injector out That injector's out. Yep. This injector doesn't want to come out. That injector's out. This one doesn't want to come out. Yeah, see, I don't see why we would have needed to torque that to a specific value. Now we lose. Now we loosen these, and when we release, all of the injectors should come out. Let's make sure they're loose. There we go. Okay, so from the old injectors, you're going to want to remove all of these pieces here, and then they're going to go onto the new injectors, like this. I have it upside down. They're going to go onto the new injectors like this. And the other thing is you want your fuel rail to be laying out and you're going to put all these injectors in uh, with the fuel rail out and then you're going to get a block like this in your kit that's toleranced perfectly for the gap and this needs to fit in between these when you tighten so you don't tighten them all the way down. The full tightening happens after it's in the actual uh, cylinder. Okay, now I'm going to take my tool, I'm going to fit this in here, and then I'm going to tighten until it's snug, but I can still pull the block out. And there we go. Now this rail is ready to be installed. Okay, so this next clip is going to skip forward with the back fuel rail already installed, but I just want to let you know that the procedure is 
exactly the same for the back fuel rail as it is for the front fuel rail. Uh, make sure to do the back fuel rail first, uh, but follow this procedure on the front fuel rail uh, when you install your back fuel rail. So the reason is um, either we didn't record it or I was too busy trying to figure out exactly how to install it that I didn't get a good clip of it. But essentially what I'm going to explain in the next section here is that the bolts, the four bolts that hold the fuel rail in, you're going to want to install the two um, the two bolts that are on the right side of the main tube, and by main tube I mean the actual fuel rail, um, the bolts that are right next to the injector bolts, you'll have two holes there. You're going to want to put those in first. You're going to lean the fuel rail back slightly towards that PCV um, cap in your oil cap. Uh, just a couple of degrees, just enough to start getting those bolts threaded. And when I say hand tight, I really mean it. Uh, what you're going to do is just hand thread those in until you just feel resistance with your fingers uh, and do that for both. Then after that you're going to follow uh, the next steps where you do the 180 degrees at a time. So I'm um, just going to roll to the next clip. So this is what the fuel rail looks like when it's flush and this is what the fuel rail is going to look like when you first put the injectors in. What you do is you're going to put this bolt in and this bolt in and you're going to keep hand tightening them until they're uh, until you feel resistance with your fingers. So I'm going to do that now. Just need the bolt. Okay so now that these here are hand tight and remember when you're tightening these you're going to lean the fuel rail back in this direction a little bit uh, that way you can get the thread started and they're hand tight I can't get them any further now we're going to start the sequence of tightening this 180 degrees and then this 180 degrees and you keep going until you feel um, a real amount of resistance And the whole goal of this is to get this fuel rail flush like the one in the back is. The procedure is the same for both. So we're just showing you the front. It's also getting a little dark outside. And this torque wrench is set to 5 newton meters, which is the final tightening torque, which means I won't be able to go too tight. All right, so now these are torque to yield, the long ones. So we're going to go A, then the back, D, then here, B, and then here, C. We're turning them 90 degrees after we hit them. After they went to 5 newton meters, now an additional 90 degrees. And you'll do the same for the back. So I just want to clarify that both the bolts for the injectors and the bolts for the fuel rail are torque to yield. So once they do hit their torque rating, you are supposed to turn them all an additional 90 degrees. I didn't show it in this video. So the uh, 12 bolts in total that are used to hold the injectors in, you need to turn those an additional 90 degrees once you torque them to their torque rating. 
Um, and right now I'm just showing some images of the injectors after they're all out. You can see they're pretty grimy. And then the new injectors behind them. I did get my injectors from Trodo. Uh, they were much cheaper. And if you're getting them shipped to the States, make sure that they don't charge you a VAT. Uh, that was an awesome tip that I got on the forums. And I reached out to them. They actually ended up refunding me some of my money uh, because they did charge me for the VAT. Uh, and, and that only works if you're not in uh, Europe, I believe. Uh, let me see if there's anything else. I mean, from this point on, you're just going to reinstall everything that you've already installed or that you already took apart. Um, you know, if you need help with that, just watch the video in reverse. <laughs> and um, these Kevlar rings, I think, Teflon, not Kevlar, <laughs> these Teflon rings, they're the, the small little rings that are at the bottom of each of the injectors. So they're going to come pre-installed. But if you're pulling your injectors out yourself and you're planning on it reinstalling them, you need to buy new rings. You have to renew them. Uh, that specialty tool that I uh, am using in this video that does come with the items that you need to add the Teflon rings back onto the injector, but you cannot use the tef reuse the Teflon rings. Um, you do have to pull your fuel injector if you ever need to do your valve cover. I did do my valve cover myself uh, with with my friend who's recording here um, probably last year. Uh, that was a 10 hour job. I never want to have to do that again. That was before they came out with all of the PCV um, caps and fixes. And um, yeah, I, I guess that's pretty much it. I, I guess I should talk about why I'm doing new injectors. Um, I'm getting ready to go pure 850 uh, with an E50 blend and I know that ethanol can gunk up your injectors and I just wanted a fresh start. Make sure that everything's functioning perfectly uh, before I full send it, essentially. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I recommend that you go to the Beamer Post forums. Um, and reach out there's a lot of individuals on there that know what they're talking about i ask a ton of questions it might seem like i know what i'm doing because i'm putting out a video but i certainly um i would say you know i have some knowledge of the car but I'm, i don't have the confidence yet to make decisions without asking others first so i can get a general consensus and yeah i think i think that's it this time for real so thank you guys for watching, and um, you don't really need to subscribe. I don't think I really plan on doing this um, for, I don't plan on doing other videos. This is just a give back to the community that has answered so many of my questions. So thanks guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, you know, whatever.